This is a video about how to compute gain scores using SPSS and then to use those gain scores as a part of a analysis of variance, um, a one-way analysis of variance in this case. The first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate a gain score. The gain score that we'll be calculating in this case is the difference between Peabody Picture Vocabulary scores in first grade and Peabody Picture Vocabulary scores for the same students when they were kindergartens. To do that, to transform compute variables. What I'm interested in doing in this case is, is finding the difference or the gains that occur between kindergarten, which is this Rosh Wright score, and the PPVT scores in first grade, which is this one right here. So I'm going to just create a name called PPVT. one K, which will tell me that it's the difference between first and second grade. And I'm going to create that by subtracting Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test in first grade minus Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test in kindergarten. Once I have that formula, I just click OK. And I've created a new variable. We then go to analyze. Here's our new variable. These are all of the change scores. One of the things that we're interested in knowing is whether or not there's a correlation, fairly high correlation, between the Peabody Picture Vocabulary scores in kindergarten and first grade. Gain scores um, work best or most reliably as indicators in an analysis of variance when there's high correlation between the two measures. So to do that, we go to Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate, and I already have the two variables identified there. So we just click OK, and we'll see that the correlation is 0.722. So more than half of the variance, if we square that number, we get the coefficient of determination. So we have about 50% of the variance in PPVT first grade scores accounted for by um, the status of the students in kindergarten. We might want that to be a little higher, but I think it's probably sufficient for us to analyze this data. Using gain scores works best when we are measuring a highly reliable variable and when the correlation between the pretest and the post-test or between the two time measures is very high. This is not quite as high as we would like it to be, but I'm going to use it for our illustration purposes. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get some descriptive information on the pretest and the post-test on um, PPVT in kindergarten and PPVT in first grade. So we're going to get descriptive statistics. Um, Actually, I'm just going to compare means. Um, so I get means, and the variables that I'm interested in are PPVT, Rush Right, and PPVT, Rush Right, first grade. And I want to see those differences according to level of family risk, which is going to be the between subjects factor in the analysis that we're going to be doing. We are just going to make sure that we get the means standard deviation because that will let us know um, the nature of our effect. Continue and OK. And we see that um, as we look across these groups, we see that there is some variability that um, this first group here has a significantly higher PPT mean score than we find down here at group with group four. Therefore, when we're looking at these differences, one of the challenges that we face is that when some groups have very high initial scores, they may run into a potential ceiling effect, um, whereas groups that are scoring lower potentially have more range to increase something that we have to consider when we're selecting our 
variables for analysis and when we're determining whether or not the use of gain scores is appropriate. For our purposes today, we'll do, we're going to treat this particular scale as not being compromised by a ceiling. Since these are rush right scores, they can take much higher values. So we're going to assume that there is not a ceiling of that. The next thing that we do is now that we have calculated our um, our gain scores, we're going to use these gain scores here as the dependent variable in a one-way ANOVA. So we go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. Our dependent variable in this case is going to be our change variable that we had computed. Our fixed factor, which is our between subjects factor, is going to be family risk. We go over to model just to make sure that type 3 full factorial is checked. We're going to go to um, plots because we're interested in um, seeing differences in family risk level. And we're going to go down to options, look for differences according to family risk, and we're going to look for mean differences in that dependent variable of change scores using the least significant difference. We have descriptive stats, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests checked um, to give us a, a better understanding of what's happening with our data. We click continue, and we click OK. The results indicate, now these are all change scores, so the results indicate that for those individuals with family risk levels of zero, their average change between kindergarten and first grade was 11 points. They went up on an average of 11 points. Those that had a risk index of four went up by 14 points. Those that were at level one went up by just about 11 points. Now, we remember that there were differences in um, some of the pretest scores amongst these groups, so that might account to some extent for differences that we see in these means. That's one of the arguments for using analysis of covariance as an alternative to the simple analysis of gain scores. We look at our results, we see that we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance since this number is less than 0 0.05, um, but we trust that our analyses are fairly robust to that uh, violation, as long as, as long as that violation is not due to um, extreme outliers. We then move down to our analysis. Here is family risk. This is our independent variable. Our dependent variable is the change scores that we had generated. We see that there is a significant effect, that this significance value here is less than 0.05, so we would reject the null hypothesis that the change scores are equivalent across levels of family risk. We find out that we're accounting for about 1.4% of the variance. So we're not accounting for a lot of the variability in change scores based on family risk, but we are accounting for some. We can then look to see if we can identify where the significant differences are occurring. And what we see is when we look at these pairwise comparisons, we see that there is a significant difference between family risk level 0 and family risk level 4. We also see that family risk level 1 is different from level 2, 3, and 4. We see that level 2 is different from level 1 and level 4. We see that level 3 is different from level 1. This one comes right out at 0 0.05. We can we can expand that, and we see that it's actually 0 0.05028. So it's actually greater than 0 0.05. So we would not reject that null hypothesis. So we would not indicate that there is a difference between three and four. And 
again down with 4, we see that there's a significant difference from 0, 1, and 2. We can look at our profile plot and we can see that the change scores appear to vary significantly with this level 4 group having the greatest gains. But we have to keep in mind our units that are over on our y-axis. You know, these, this makes it look like it's a very sharp improvement, but these are only four points from the baseline up to here. So um, it is not as dramatic as it might look, but it shows those individuals that are at level four had slightly more than a 14-point gain. Um, and that is the overview of how to run a one-way ANOVA with change scores.